Good afternoon boys and girls and welcome to Storytime. Today we're going to learn a few of the adventures of Pegeen of Hoth. Now this book was written by Kathleen Watkins, illustrated by Margaret Ann Suggs and published by Gil Ireland. Now Pegeen is a pig that lives in Hoth. Let's have a look on the inside of the book and we'll find a map of Hoth and his home. So he lives in, in an area of Hoth and Hoth is a peninsula. And a peninsula is an area of land nearly complete, nearly completely surrounded by water that juts into the sea. That's what we call a peninsula. So here we have the some lighthouses in Holtz. We have an island off it called Ireland's Eye. We have his friend Nana Kit lives down there. There's some golf courses. Pigging lives there. We have the railway line that goes out. And we have a dolmen, Aideen's dolmen. If you don't, a dolmen is um, a large rock, flat rock, resting on some upright rocks. And um, they're hundreds of years old, very, very old. And there's one I've actually found, a famous one, found in Clare in the Burn. If you want to check it out sometime. And there's Holt Castle. And a fairy tree. Okay, so that's where Piggy lives, that's his area, and that's where he lives. And let's begin his stories. So, Piggy of Holt, as you said, written by Kathleen Watkins. And the story is called Pigs Can Fly, But They Can't Swim. So, let's get started. It was a beautiful sunny morning as Piggy looked out his window of his little house beside the GAA playing fields on the hill of Holt. He picked up his mobile phone and called his friend Sammy Seal. He just had to finish his breakfast, eat an apple, and eat some jam. He's looking at his telescope, sees it's a lovely day, and says, Oh, I'll ring up Sammy Seal and see what he's up to. Hello, Sammy, he said. It's a perfect day for a picnic on Ireland's Eye. Yes, it is. Come on down when you're ready, Piggy, Sammy said. And don't forget your life jacket. Hmm, what do you want his life jacket for? Just as Piggy arrived at the harbour, groups of people were walking along the pier. Well, would you look at that, one of them said. A piglet in a life jacket with a phone and a flute. Am I dreaming? That's Piggin, the harbour master said, who was standing nearby. He lives here in Hoth and is a fine piglet. Indeed. Hello there, Piggin, said, smiling at the man. I live here on the peninsula. I like the word peninsula. And off he trotted down the pier to meet Sammy Seal and his four brothers, Sean, Seamus, Searsha and Shane. The little piglet was very excited because the seals had promised to give him a swimming lesson. Aha, uh -huh, that's why he needed his life jacket. To go on a boat and go out to the island. When he saw the five big seals in the water, Piggin climbed down the ladder and leapt onto Sammy's back. Ah, very cold splashes, he said, and gave a loud squeal and a shiver. Not at all, Sammy replied. All very well for you, Piggin said. You live in it. They moved out of the mouth of Hoth Harbour with Sammy's four brothers swimming in pairs behind him. The pot of seals moved quickly and gracefully in the water. Piggin held on tightly to Sam, but managed to wave the trotter to say farewell to the harbour master. Oh, look, Sammy said. The children are doing a sailing course. There's Sive, Nanakin's granddaughter, Piglet said. Oh no, she has cap's eyes. Don't worry, she could not be safer, Sammy said. She's wearing her life jacket and the crash boat is here to pick her up. She is a good swimmer too, Piggin said. You must teach me how to swim when we get to the island. After a few minutes, they arrived on Ireland's Eye, where Sammy and his four brothers helped Piggin with his swimming lesson. At first, Piggin was scared, but he knew he could do it. He took off his life jacket, climbed off Sammy's back, and moved his trotters as fast as he could. Piggy made dreadful snorting noises as the seawater got up his snout and into his ears, but he kept trying. Pigs can't fly, but they can't swim, he thought, as he began to swim faster and faster. The seals all whistled and clapped. They were delighted to see the little piglet swimming in the sea. I'm learning fast. This is wonderful. I love it, especially floating on my back, he said, while blowing a spray of seawater out of his mouth. Can I dive off the rocks? Piggin asked the seals. As often as you like, the seals said in unison. Piggin jumped and dived many times. Then the seals gave him a water ballet display. He had never seen anything like it before. It's called synchronized swimming, Sammy said. The seals practice their synchronized swimming every day. Piggin took photos with his mobile phone. Nana Kit would want to see these, he said. When the seals finished their display, the little piglet played the flute for them and danced to music on his phone, lifting his trotters high off the ground. The seals were delighted. They clapped and cheered and swam in circles with delight. We are so lucky to be here having a good time, Piggin said. We'll have to come again soon. They had a delicious picnic and they all felt very, very sleepy. They lay on the rocks and closed their eyes. The only sounds to be heard were the waves washing up on the shore and an aeroplane overhead. The sound of the plane woke Piggin. There is the green bird on his way to Dublin Airport, he said, and I'm going to be on one soon. Tell me more, Piggin, Sammy said, stretching after his nap. I'm going to London on my holidays. Piggin's story was interrupted by the noise of the fishing boats coming home. Quickly, Sean, Seamus, Saoirse, Shane, Sammy called. Let's go back to Hoth Harbour for some fish. 
Mmm, delicious fish. When they arrived at the harbour, Kevin from Nicky's place rang a bell and came out of the shop with buckets of fish heads and tails. The seals had a feast. Dozens of people gathered at the edge of the pier to look at the seals, including some of the children from the sailing course. Pegin said thank you to Sammy and his brothers. That was the best day I ever had. Thank you so much. Pegin could hardly hear his own voice because of the deafening noise of the excited and greedy seagulls overhead. When he turned to go, he saw something on the ground. It was a phone. Oh, excuse me, sir. Is this yours? Pegin asked a man in a red jacket standing beside him. The man turned around. It must have slipped out of my pocket, he said. Thank you very much, Pegin. What a great fellow you are. I'm lucky that you found us. It's a pleasure, sir, said Pegin, and off he trotted to get the little train that would take him to Nanakit's house near the Bailey Lighthouse. On the way, Pegin wrote a thank you note to the seals. I could send a text, he thought, but it's always nice to receive a note. He called his friend Sally Seagull on his mobile phone, who flew down and took the note in her beak to deliver it to the seals at the harbour. Pegin was tired when he arrived at Nanakin's cottage. Your hair is lovely, Nanakit, he said, smiling at his good friend. I got it done in the village earlier, she said. Come in and tell me all about your day. You can stay the night if you like. I have a bed made up for you. Oh, looky, Pegin, he gets to go on a sleepover. Pegin sat down in one of Nanakin's big cosy armchairs and looked at the new tea table she had prepared for him. There was a beautiful tablecloth and napkins with the delicate china cups and delicious things to eat. This is perfect, Nanakit. Thank you. I'll just put the kettle on, she said, and you can tell me all about your day. Nanakit came back with the teapot. We shall leave it here for a moment, she said. There was no reply. Nanakin looked at Pegin fast asleep in the armchair with a great big smile on his face. She covered him with her best blue blanket and sat down to pour herself a nice cup of tea. Ah, poor. Pegin is so tired after his day at the harbour. So it's a good night from him and it's a good night for us. Talk to you soon, boys and girls. Good night.